Hey guys, welcome back to Team Pandory. Hey, we've got a package. Let's open it up. And again. And again. So yes, today we have another handheld. This one is the Ambernic RG552, and it's been updated to Android 11. This one was sent to us without any money exchanged from Geek Buying. They sell gadgets, 3D printers, as well as emulation handhelds. And this one in particular has stock in Germany. Please give them a visit and say hi. Judentat. We reviewed the 353P, and I'm wondering how Ambernic's previous flagship model, the 552, can compare. According to this label, we have four PCs inside this tiny little box with 64 Gs. Pimping. On the side here, we have the map of where the buttons are. Here's the spec. Six core processor up to 1.8 gigahertz. Nice. What else does it say here? Four gigabytes of RAM, six hours of battery life. Hmm. Opening the box, we'll greet to this. And the handheld's D-pads, buttons and sticks are protected by a layer of plastic. I always give my stick some protection, large and ribbed. Yeah, this looks pretty damn nice. It's slightly heavy and has a bit of heft to it. You also get this power adapter, which is quite large. I know. This one's a switching power supply. The pins say Europe. And yeah, it's up to, what is it, 30? Yeah, 30 watts. On the other side, USB-C. And other things we get in the box are these two micro SD cards, both unbranded, generic, and the 16 gig is for the Linux operating system, and the 64 is for the games. A one meter USB-C cable. Not long enough to tie up Wesley, don't worry. A clear screen protector that fits perfectly. And finally, the manual, in both English and Chinese. <sighs> duct tape. Race cars, lasers, aeroplanes, duct tape. Oh, who? Let's have a quick look around the units. At the bottom, we have two stereo speakers, two micro SD slots, a reset, and a function button. On the right side, a power switch. On the top, we have a USB for power, USB for data, the headphone jack, HDMI out, and these here are the vents so the fan can blow out hot air to keep the system cool. On the left side, we have a volume rocker. We have these rubber pads, and on the right, the air intake vent. The buttons here feel very good, typical for Ambernic. And the D-pad too, very Super Nintendo. The recessed anal sticks also feel pretty good, and they click in for the extra button. Both L and R buttons on the top are very clicky. In the hand, it feels very hefty. The analog sticks are a bit out of the way, and L1 and R1 are difficult to get to. We can also see problems pushing the F button when it's right next to the reset button. As well as on the sides, we have the volume rocker as well as the power button. Possibly one push of this will turn into standby. We'll have to see. Now it's time for the size comparison. The RG552 is around three times the length of a Roy Bush tea bag at one and a half times the width. The screen is two T-Bags big, but we should really compare it to other handhelds. It's slightly larger than the Retro Pocket 3, but let's add the other Ambernet handhelds. The 353P, the 351P, the PSP, and the Ret... what? While the screen of the 552 is of higher resolution and much more saturated, the brightness is somewhat lacking. Even though the Retro Pocket 2 has a 720p screen, that one looks much more appealing. The initial boot to Android takes this long. Why don't robots like apples? Because they are androids. Uh, why doesn't Captain Picard have an iPhone? He already has an android. And it came with a data plan. I am not Picard. I am John Lou. 21 seconds. Not the quickest, but not too bad. We have no issues with the touchscreen at all. We have 64 gigabytes of internal memory, and 11 of that is being used up. We can use the rest of this for our own applications or whatever we wish. The system is Android 11, and many emulators are installed at stock. All you need to do is add the ROMs. You can now insert the 64 gigabyte card. And now we can let RetroArch install and update. If you need any help with this, check out the guide made by Retro Game Corps. It's got everything laid out for you. Once the games list has been refreshed, we should be able to see our games. But unlucky for us, the NES and the SNES folders are completely corrupted. 
This could be due to a bad image they burnt or a fake microSD card. Here are the systems this front end can emulate. You can push the A button to see the games installed, then select one and push A to start it. Let's check out some gameplay. Most of the earlier arcade games will be fine, but this won't be able to play arcade versions of Tekken or Killer Instinct. Let's move on to the handhelds now. And this is the original Game Boy. As you can see on the left and right, most of the screen is not being used. We could stretch the screen, but it just looked very odd. With the 5-3 aspect ratio of the 553, this system does a good job of emulating the Game Boy Advance. And if you wanted to go one step further, the DS. As the 552's touchscreen works in Android, we can actually rotate the screen. And after ignoring the error messages, we can play Nintendo DS. And if we don't need the second screen, we could just use one. Diddy Kong Racing. And here's some PSP. This one's running at two times resolution with a slight bump on the core clock. If you need some help with PSP settings, please check our Retro Pocket 3 PSP guide. And then we started seeing some problems. You can see the graphical itching here, which may be a problem with the GPU and the emulator. Out on 2006, coast to coast, we actually managed to get running at pretty much 100% speed. This is running at two times resolution on unbuffered setting in Vulcan. And now onto the consoles. The first set will be for Sega, and of course, the earlier systems such as the Master System and the Mega Drive are no problem to emulate. Moving on to the Sega Saturn, 2D games like Sexy Paradise are no problem. But for 3D games like Virtua Fighter 2, we'll need to use frame skip to have 100% speed. And the same goes for Sega Rally Championship. For the Sega Dreamcast, we had it running at 100% speed with no frame skip. Moving on to the Nintendo set of consoles, yeah, NES, no problem. Same goes for Super Nintendo. And the Nintendo 64 also ran quite well. This is probably due to it using the Moopin 64 Plus emulator in Android.
the system really slowed down when we played some GameCube. Every game we tried was a slideshow. We also tried Minano Rhythm Tengoku on the Nintendo Wii. It runs at about 80% speed, but as it's a rhythm game, no good. Next up are Sony consoles. Here's a PlayStation, and it runs fabulous. As we played more fighting games, it became apparent that the D-pad was actually quite bad when it came to throwing out Hadoukens. Here's some PlayStation 2 emulation, and to get some decent speed, we had to choose optimized settings. And for 2D games, you can see this is running really well. And here's Gradius 5. It's not quite 100% speed, but it's quite playable. That is, if we ignore the graphical glitching in the background. Surprisingly enough, Katamari Damashi also runs quite well, but on the second stage it slowed down to about 80 to 90% in speed. Tekken Tag Tournament, you can forget. And the same can be said for Ridge Racer 5. And Final Fantasy X. So if we check some of the other applications that are installed, we have Moonlight. With this we can stream our PC to our handheld if we have an NVIDIA card. But as I don't, we need to find something like Steam Link. At stock, the Play Store is not installed, so we need to add our APK files manually or by using something like APK Pure. And we can say this does work, but it's incredibly laggy. This might be due to the system only using 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. And then more issues appeared. That error box we had before, as well as the Android system just being generally unstable. In the past few days we've been testing this, it's restarted itself around 10 times. Simply unacceptable. The saving grace for all Ambenic handhelds, Linux. With this we can go straight into the games and just play. That would be the case until we find that they've used minimal effort on setting the whole thing up. Every game is set to fill the whole screen. And if we set the aspect ratio to core provided, we can see that something is very wrong. Even Genesis ran really badly before we switched the core. Amiga was unplayable. N64 looks like this. We switched the core, it looks like this. And it played like absolute garbage. And then things took a turn for the worst. The 16 gigabyte card stopped loading up Linux. I ran it through the fake tester and yeah, it was trash. So we had to get a new genuine microSD. We burnt the new version of Badassera onto this and it's already obvious that it runs better than stock. As well as the aspect ratio fixes, there's also the bezels on the side which look great. Amiga emulation does run smoother, but if you want to push it with fire and ice or gym power, they'll be performing at around 80 to 90% speed. And then when we hit Flycast, major disappointment. It's pleasing to see that we have ScumVM. None of the current Linux front ends support the touchscreen, so we'll need to use the regular controls. There's also many ports, such as Doom. And then Open Beat of Rage. Today's game is Turrican vs Terminator, and if you want to try this, it's free to download. Links down below. As we really wanted better performance, we tried Jealous. Very similar to the last two systems, this one's free on GitHub. And we actually do have a boost. We got 100% speed in Fire and Ice. And in-game, Gym power runs really well. And this also applies for the Dreamcast, as well as Naomi. And as we can't use Vulkan, PSP runs only a little worse than Android, but using a frame skip of one will make most games playable. It's time for the pros and the cons. The RG552 has a nice screen, 
and is compatible with Barracera, Jealous and Amber Lake. But there are far too many problems with this unit to consider recommending it. We really wanted to light this device, but asking around $200 for a handheld that comes with junk micro SD cards and extremely buggy software is an insult to the consumer. I mean, for around half the price you can get one of these 353Ps, or for $100 cheaper you can get a Retro Pocket 3. As I play some Gigawing, here's a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. You guys are amazing and we cannot thank you enough. We make video reviews like these, as well as video tutorials, and fix the A500 Mini, and them cheap Chinese arcade boxes. If you want to support our work, we have the Discord, as well as merchandise, and also we have the simple like and subscribe. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! See you on the flip side. Subscribble. <laughs>